Our Father and our God, we thank you for the things we've been learning. We're praying, O oh Lord, that you really teach us as a father will teach his children, even today in Jesus' name. And we pray that your wisdom, which we're learning every time, will become part of our lives in Jesus' name. That in the journey of life, as we apply your word, we reveal and manifest and show that kind of wisdom to you in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Make us good, obedient, loyal, faithful children. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody should say amen. amen. All right, when we pray, you should say a good amen. Today we're looking at Proverbs chapter 4. And you will see the title today, it's uh, very important. The title is The Father's Instruction for His Children. We're in Proverbs chapter 4. And in Proverbs chapter 4, you want to notice uh, something very important. The Father's Instruction for His Children. Obviously, we're talking about the Father. Then we're talking about the instruction that he has. He's not having these instructions for strangers. He's not having the instructions for people that do not have any relationship with him. He has the instruction for his own children. Let's look at those important words in the passage we're looking at today. First of all, that the father is talking to his children. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1, here, Ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. At the very opening verse, that is at the door of the chapter, it tells us we have instruction. And then it tells us it's coming from a father. And it tells us that instruction from the father is addressed to children. And then it mentions the children. Look at the here, O oh my son, receive my sayings, receive my instruction, receive my teaching. It says, So, son, receive my sayings. And then it says, The years of thy life shall be many. In verse 20, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. We have established one fact. The fact is, it's the father here talking to the children. What kind of talk does he have with them? He's giving them instruction. Come back again to verse 1. Here, open your ears, pay attention, listen, receive the word. Here, ye children. That is when we're children, it's the time to listen. It's a period of time in our lives when we ought to open our two ears and hear instruction. And then it says, hear the instruction of a father. The instruction of a father. And then it says, attend to no understanding. Then it tells us in verse 2, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Because I myself to you, in verse 3, for I was my father's son. It says, I'm a father now, and I'm giving instruction to children. But then it says, there was a time when I too, I was my father's son, tender-hearted, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. You see here, this man, now giving us instruction, and he remembers the time he too was a child. He had a father, and he had a mother too. In verse 4, he taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and then you will live. It's Solomon that is actually talking here. And David was his father. And his father David taught him the way of the Lord. And he wanted Solomon to have a personal experience as well as intimate relationship with the Lord. See what David told his son. That is, what David told Solomon in First Chronicles chapter 28. 
First Chronicles chapter 28. And we're going to read there in verse 9. First Chronicles 28 and then verse 9. Here we find David, the father, just before he left, before he died, talking to his own son and giving him instruction that he should not forget. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father. And then he said, serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he'll be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. I want you to notice how David spoke to Solomon. And you need to know that David loved Solomon very, very much. More than you can imagine. And uh, Solomon was not talking to his own son. See what he told him. He said, know the God of your father. Don't just know about him. Don't just hear about him. Have an intimate relationship with him. Know him as your heavenly father. Know him as the one that forgives all your sins. Know him as the one that is commanding you the way you ought to go. Know him as the one you are following, the controller of your life. And then when you know him, he said, Solomon, my son, you know what I want you to do? I want you to serve him. Not half-heartedly serve him with a perfect heart. And then it said, do you know this God? He searches all hearts. He's going to be finding out in every one of your actions whether you are serving him with a heart or not. And then he said something that children don't like to hear. He said something that children dislike. I remember when I was in the secondary school many, many years ago, and I was uh, teaching uh, students like you. And I taught them the regular subject, and then we had a group, a Christian group. And then I will teach them in the Christian group as well. But then in my class, if uh, a child was not doing assignment, and that uh, child, I will call the child, I will say, if you continue like this, be very, very careful. You may not pass your exam. Oh, they will say, teacher, teacher, reverse that thing because we know you are a Christian. Don't use the mouth of prayer to cause me. Say, I will pass my exam. And then I will say, I said, if, if you continue like this, and you do not pay attention and do your assignment, a child that continues like this will not be able to pass exam. And then the child will say, teacher, you must reverse that thing. You must turn it around. Don't tell me I will not have pass. Because I know if you say I will pass, you are a Christian teacher, I know I will pass. Then I will repeat the same thing. If you continue like this, then you will not make it in the exam. You know, it's not a cause. Exactly what David was telling his son. Look at it at the end of verse 9. He said, if you seek him, he will be found of thee. But then now David told his son, he said, but if. The condition is there. It is not a curse. If thou forsake him, he will cast thee off. How long? Tell me out loud forever that's what the father told the son and it is the doctrine of the bible that if we seek the lord will be he will be found of us but if we forsake the lord then he will cast us off forever but then you know david taught solomon and he taught him to seek wisdom and then after david had died and solomon became a king the lord now asked him he said ask what i will give you and then solomon remembered what his father had been teaching him come back to proverbs chapter 4. proverbs chapter 4 reading from verse 1 hear ye children the instruction of your father and attend to no understanding for i will give you good doctrine for forsake ye not my lord now listen for i was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me my father taught me also what did my father teach me? He said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, 
and keep my commandments and live. What else did his father tell him? Verse 5, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. His father taught him, get wisdom, get understanding. Now his father died, his father was no more there, and God asked him, he said, Solomon, ask what I will give you. Do you know that exactly what his father had taught him? The father taught him, get wisdom, get understanding. When Almighty God now asked him, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? He said, God, I want you to give me what my father told me to get. He told me to get wisdom. He told me to get understanding. Give me an understanding heart that I may know how to lead these, your people. And that pleased the Lord. When you pray, when you act, when you behave as your father, especially your father in the Lord, your father who knows the Lord, and your father has taught you, you pray like that, you will discover that it will please the Lord. Now we're examining uh, three points today. Number one, following the father's wisdom. Following the father's wisdom. Number two, forsaking the fool's way forsaking the fool's way number three finding and obeying the father's word finding and obeying the father's word now we go to point number one following the father's wisdom the father's wisdom is like light and that light will be going before you in life as the light, the pillar of light, the pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud, went before the children of Israel all through their journey in the wilderness. And they were following that light and following that light and following that light. The same thing, the word of the Lord is a light across our pathway. And in life, what will make you wise? What will make you to behave in a way that others will be looking at you as if you were a genius? a super person is that you have a guide you have the word of god that you are following and following and following every step of the way in um, we have read it from verse one to verse five let's now go to verse six it says forsake her not she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and uh, with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall, uh, she shall bring thee unto honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give thee to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee. And then it says here, O my son, and receive my sayings. And the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be stretching. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life how many verses have i read from verse one till the end now how many verses have i read 13 verses now you are going to do as an assignment do you have a biro there okay you are going to write write it horizontally that is on a straight line going from left to right not something difficult just write one after that, you write two. After that, you write three. Quickly, quickly. After that, you write four. And you're going to write on a straight line. You mustn't write on two lines. You mustn't write one to nine. And then continue now uh, on the second line with a 10, 11. You will write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and uh, what? Thirteen. Now, if you have written 1 to 13, 
you don't need to spy now no giraffe now it's something that everybody can do how can somebody be in gs1 gs2 and not know how to write one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen we don't need to uh, stretch our neck in writing one to thirteen have you done it i said have you done it now you are going to you are going to do something you are going to uh, count one here one here that you used to say the first the position number one here that's one the one that takes position number one at the end here that's uh, what 13. the one that takes position number two here that's two the one that takes second position here on the right that is uh, 12. then the third position here that's three the third position here that is uh, 11. now go on like that let me know the first here, the second here, the third here. When you get to six, you will stop. Have you done that? Okay. Uh, positions number one, two, three, four, five, six. That one is very simple because that's just the one and the two and the three and the four and the five and the six. Now, as I come here from number 13, 13, that's number one, 12, that's number two. 11, that's number 3. 10, that's number 4. 9, that's number 5. 8, that's number number 6. Uh, you know, uh, there's a way to work it out, but uh, if I work it out my normal way, I'll lose a lot of you who don't know mathematics too much. Now, the midpoint, get my point now, the midpoint of that line is what number? seven that's it you have six on this side you have six on this side and the middle point which is the middle which is the midpoint we call it the midpoint or mid -point, which is the center of that whole passage is what seven now here is the point the center of your life the center of your life is the center of that passage you have read and that center what number is the center Okay, which verse is the center of our life? Again, verse 7. Look at verse 7 now. It is the center. If you miss that center of life, you meet the pivot of life, you meet the support, you miss the support of life. Here is the center. Verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's the essential thing. It is the central thing. It is the most important thing. It is the indispensable thing, any adjective we can use to show that wisdom is compulsory, wisdom is necessary, wisdom is very important. You cannot take a step without it, you cannot pass an exam without it, you cannot have a good life without it, you cannot have a good relationship with your brothers and sisters without it, you will not be able to live a normal life without it. Wisdom is the principal thing, the central thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. You see that you need wisdom in your life, and that's why we're going through the book of Proverbs. Because as you go through chapter after chapter and verse after verse, you are going to discover real, real wisdom in your life. And then in verse in verse six it says, "Forsake her not." And then it says, she shall preserve, she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. We're going to do something now. We're going to see the commandments were given. Already we have been told in, from verse 1, here is our father giving us instruction. And he's giving us the instruction to our children. And it is during this time of childhood that we need this wisdom so that it will go through with us through life. And it's been talking about uh, wisdom. What are we to do with this wisdom? You're counting yourself. Number one is in verse five. Get it. Get wisdom. Get understanding. It says the way to get started, get it. How do we get this wisdom? In the New Testament now, Jesus is our wisdom. And Jesus Christ is our Savior. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice 
and he opens the door. I will come in into him. I will sup with him. I'll take supper with him. I will fellowship with him. And therefore, number one thing, get it. Then, number two, in verse five, forget it not. You see the problem with many children, they learn it now, they get it now, then they forsake it or they forget it later. But number two, it says, you will not forget it, forget it not, neither decline from the word of my mouth. Number three now, it's in verses, forsake her not. It's not talking about wisdom. Uh, reading from verse 5, it said, forget it not. Then in verse 6, it says, I'm not going to use each for this wisdom anymore. I'm going to personify this wisdom. As if this wisdom were a daughter, or as if this wisdom were a sister. And I'm going to be using the, pron uh, the pronoun her for this wisdom now. Forsake her not. What's number one? Get it. What's number two? Forget it not. Number three now, forsake her not. And she shall preserve thee. Number four, love her. And if you love wisdom, you'll be reading this Bible every time. Love her and she shall keep thee. And then he tells us again that wisdom is the principal thing, the central thing, the essential thing, the indispensable thing, the thing you cannot do without. So important, indispensable in our lives. And with all that getting, get understanding. And then he tells us now, number five, exalt her. More than silver, more than gold. Other children will run after money. They run after friendship. They run after other things. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. If you really want promotion, here is it. She will promote you. She shall bring you to honor when thou dost. Number six now, embrace her embrace her and when you embrace uh, someone it means you hold that person will not let the person go it's uh, still an expression of loving that wisdom how many have we got now okay and then it says she shall give to thine head ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee hear O my son and receive my saying and the years of thy life shall be many I have taught you in the way of wisdom. He comes back to wisdom now. I have led thee in the right path. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. How many have you got before? Okay, this is number seven now. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, and she is for she is thy life. You will take hold. All these lessons we're learning, all these instructions we're hearing about wisdom, about understanding, about discretion, we will hold on to everything. We will not let the word of God go. You will not forget it. You will not forsake it. You will not abandon it. You will love it. You will exalt it. You will embrace it. You will take fast hold of it so that it will do good in your life. And I pray that this word will do good in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Now we go to point number two, forsaking the fool's way. Forsaking the fool's way. Now if you are really going to benefit from uh, wisdom, uh, following wisdom, that's a positive thing. But uh, tell me about a child about a child that will drink milk and immediately after drinking milk he will go and drink kerosene will that milk do any work tell me out loud no it will not do any work tell me about a child a child that will immediately take a loaf of bread and after taking a loaf of bread immediately he will take uh, the bottle with the rat poison and put the spoon inside and uh, put in his mouth the loaf of bread that he took will that loaf of bread profit him at all no the rat poison will not allow the loaf of bread to do a good work that means then you get wisdom in point number one if you now look at the fool 
and you take the way of the foolish after you are taking a loaf of bread and then you add rat poison on it the loaf of bread will not do anything after you have taken a cup of milk now you take kerosene and you swallow that again that will not do you any good that's why point number two is very very important that you will forsake the fool's way look at it now from verse 14. proverbs chapter 4 from verse 14 Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. For the past of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. That's why if you really want to be successful in your life, if you really want to do well in life, remember, after taking the cup of milk, don't add kerosene to it. After you have taken the loaf of bread, don't add rat poison to it. After you have had all these good, word, good words of wisdom, you will not go to the fool's way and the fool's corner and the fool's nightclub and the people that do not know the way of the Lord and then go after them to learn anything, to take anything from them. Again, preserve that milk so that the milk alone will work in your life. That loaf of bread, preserve it so that that is the only thing that will work well in your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, and in your body. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain. Now, we're going to read that verse this way. And uh, when you study the Bible, you break it down a little at a time. A little at a time. Look at it this way. Abstain from evil. Isn't that good counseling? I said, isn't that good counseling? So I've omitted some words there. And I just say, abstain from evil. And that is the word of God. We're going to read it this way now. I'm going to add another word. That's how we understand the word of God. Look at it in verse 22. Abstain from all evil. You see, whatever that evil may be, it's small, it's big, it's practiced by senior boys and senior girls, it's practiced by people on the street, no matter what it is, all evil, abstain from all evil. Now, we're going to join the other word to make everything full. I look at something and somebody says, well, come on, you can do it. This is not completely evil. And somebody says, to you, it may appear to be evil. It is not exactly, totally, completely, from bottom to the top. It's not totally evil. It only appears to be evil. Then you say, I know the word of God. One, I am to abstain from evil. Two, I'm to abstain from all evil. But number three, I'm to abstain from all what? Appearance of evil why you know some people the way they backslide they say well i will not do evil any evil i will not do it. but this one is not too bad this one only appears to be evil but the bible says we will abstain from all appearance of evil and then in proverbs chapter 14 come back to proverbs our favorite book at this time now Proverbs chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. When you find somebody that doesn't have the knowledge of the word of God, and is putting light to the darkness, and is making darkness to the light, and is telling us that sweet is bitter, 
And it's telling us that swear bitter is sweet. It's telling us that black is white. It's telling us that white is black. It's telling us that sin is enjoyment. It's telling us that if you don't enjoy sin, you've not got any other enjoyment. He doesn't know the joy of salvation. To him, salvation is foolishness. And to him, it is drunkenness and smoking and immorality that is real, real pleasure. When you perceive in a person that he doesn't have the leaves of knowledge, it says, go from his presence. Don't even stay near him. Go from the presence of a foolish man when you perceive not in him the words of knowledge. In James chapter 4, James chapter 4, from verse 4, James 4, verse 4. Here the Lord is telling us that as we're talking about forsaking the fool's way, it literally means you are forsaking the way of the worldly people, the people of the world who do not know God. James chapter 4, verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Whosoever therefore, whosoever therefore, a boy or a girl, a senior student or junior uh, class a student, whoever, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, will be the enemy of God. The word of God clearly instructs us we should forsake the foolish and lame. But then the question is, who is a fool? Number one, the one that says there is no God, is that person wise? I said, is he wise? It's a fool that says in his heart, there is no God. Then, number two, who is a fool? He that makes a mock at sin. Uh, he that will be jesting and joking about sin. I will say there is nothing there. It only makes you civilized. It only makes you social. It only makes you a tough guy. It only makes you a smart, charming girl. And you know, they make a jest of sin. They do not know that there is judgment, there is condemnation because of sin. And they'll be joking and jesting about it. The Bible calls them fools. In Proverbs chapter 14 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 9. Fools make a mock at sin. Fools make a mock at sin. They mock, they jest. The ridicule, uh, when we talk, uh, when we say, no, I can't do that, I'm a child of God. When we say, no, I cannot go there because I'm born again. I cannot put on that thing because I've been cleansed. And I cannot put on that thing that will make me dirty in the sight of God. No, I cannot wear that jewelry and be like Jezebel. I'm fine enough, I'm beautiful enough the way the Lord has made me. I don't need to burn my hair, palm it or paint it or uh, rub something or do this and that. I want to keep it the way the Lord has done it. Ah, they jest and they make it. Hey, they say that's a religion. You, a little get like yourself, a young boy like yourself, you are now involved with religion. They make a mock at sin. And the Bible the Bible says that they are foolish. And then uh, those who are living in sin without thinking of eternity, uh, all those people, they are fools in the sight of the Lord. And we must be careful we are not like them. We show Christian character, we show Christian behavior, and we avoid all evil, and we avoid all appearances of evil. We will not dress like the world. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. We will not act like the people of the world. We will not, uh, we will not smoke what they are smoking. Uh, they, instead of, uh, when you say, ah, you're smoking uh, this uh, kind of thing, you're smoking uh, tobacco, oh, they said, it only makes your brain sharp. That, uh, you know, when you're taking that thing and you, you get that smoke in, 
all the information and the knowledge that was lying dormant in your mind. And that information, the understanding and the knowledge and the chemistry and the mathematics that was just sleeping there at the back, back side of your brain, sleeping on the bed in your brain. When you, when you get that cigarette in, you get that marijuana in, you get that in and you pump it there, all that knowledge will just wake up like this and then you go to the exam and then you pass the exam. Is it leaf, tobacco? that will make you successful in life or almighty God tell me out loud so you can see the foolishness of uh, the people that say it's only when they smoke nothing that information will be getting out to them thank God I became a Christian before I went to school and uh, before I went to university and uh, all the people that were smoking this one and smoking that one going to nightclub going everywhere when the exam came and uh, you know i saw some of them in the exam hall you know we were uh, we were preparing for the exam and normally i'll read my bible and i will read the text and all the things that i needed to read i will make all my revisions and then we go to the exam before we got to the exam these people that were smoking in fact when they are talking to you some of my classmates at that time at the university you can you can sense the smell the smell of tobacco and the smell of alcohol and then we were about to go in and uh, they mentioned my name and said do you remember this one do you remember this one i said yes but it's too late now five minutes of the time there's no way you can uh, get that thing now and then we got to the example before we, i started my bit i just uh, hit my head i didn't sleep i just bent my head and i closed my eyes and i mentioned that name you know that name what's that name that's the name. I mentioned the name of Jesus. I said, help me through now. I want to scale through this thing, and I want to be on top. And then I started the exam, and I kept on writing and writing and writing and writing. And then I saw some of my, some of my friends, not personal friends. You know what I mean by friends? And some of my friends, classmates, they put their Bible in their in the mouth like this, and they were like this. At another was strike here and strike the head they not nothing nothing came out my ritual did not allow it to come out smoking did not allow it to come out but my own i didn't have to knock my head i didn't have to chew my pyro i but i called the name of jesus and the name of jesus gave me the success that i want and that name of jesus will give you success in jesus name now we go to point number three finding and obeying the father's word finding and obeying the father's word in a proverbs chapter 4 reading from verse uh, reading from verse 20 my son attend to my words incline thine ear unto my sayings it says my son you want to be successful in life attend to my word that means pay attention block out everything block out every distraction block out every disturbance and take in the word of god let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart at the very center of your heart you will keep the word of god for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh health to all their flesh that's something about the word of god when you keep the word of god in the midst of your heart in the midst of your life it will be health unto you look at uh, the psalms now psalm 107 psalm 107 the word of god will be health to all your flesh psalm 107 reading from verse 20 107 verse 20 he sent his word what did the word do and healed them and delivered them from their destructions he sent his word and healed them and he delivered them from all their destruction so you see that there are girls that are misbehaving boys and girls on the side of the road they are misbehaving holding themselves don't look at them let your eyes look straight on or there are some children during the exam, they are giraffing, they are peeping, and they are stretching their necks, and their spine. You will not uh, do that. Let your eyes look straight on. And you find some other young people, uh, they are bending this way, they are going to the nightclub, 
you are looking at Jesus in front of you, looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You are allowing your eyes to look straight on. You will not bend this way. You will not bend that way. You will be following the Lord only. Verse 25 again. Let thine eyes look straight, uh, right on, straight on. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder, think, meditate on the path of thy feet and let all thy ways thy ways shall be established in verse 27 turn not to the right hand not to the left remove thy foot from evil you see what the lord is telling us when you get saved and you get saved early in life it saves you from a lot of problems and difficulties now what's the difference between a child getting saved and an adult getting saved. You see, an adult, when he gets saved, it's a wonderful thing. But, but, for that adult, he may have some heavy, heavy restitutions to make. And you see that uh, adult, he, may, he might have married two wives. He might have married another person's wife. He might have been drinking his life. And therefore, he might have brought a lot of problems on his life. When he gets born again as an adult, he has a lot of things to do, a lot of restitution to make. But look at you now, at your age. You have not married yet. You don't know what is, uh, you know, all these things, the bad things in the world. Now you get saved. Then the Lord, the Lord. Uh, will be looking at your life and watching over your life. Your life is pure. Your heart is pure. You don't know any of these uh, evil things they're doing in the world. It's an advantage when you get saved at an early age. And then as a saved youth, you're going to escape a lot of temptations and heartaches that unbelievers are getting to in the world. I pray you will be wise. I said I pray you will be wise. Then your life will be planned around the word of God. And your life will be successful. And anything that is going to be evil, going to lead you astray, already you know that's evil. I forsake that. You know this is wisdom. And I follow after the wisdom of the Lord. As we are going to pray now, let's look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Reading from verse 9. When we shall a young man cleanse his way. Young man. How will he cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path, always to guide and to save me from sin, and to show me the heavenly way forever, O oh Lord. Is thy word established and fixed on high? Thy faithfulness unto all men abideth forever near. At morning, at noon, and at night, I ever will give thee praise, for thou art my portion, O Lord, and shall be throughout all my days. Through him, whom thy word has foretold, the Savior and morning star, salvation and have been brought to those who have strayed afar. Thy word, the word of God. Thy word, the word of life. Thy word, the word of salvation. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That I might not sin. That I might not sin. That I might not sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart. I pray that this word of God will keep us away from sin and keep us away from the foolishness of the world in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray to the Lord. This book of the Lord will not depart out of your mouth. You will meditate in it day and night, all the days of your life, because it's only that way you will prosper and you will have good success. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Because it's that word that will make you to succeed in life. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. And say, Lord, I thank you that I'm saved. I thank you that I'm born again. I thank you that I have the privilege of coming here to learn your word. I will hide this word in my heart. I will hide this word in my heart. I will hide this word in my heart. That I might not sin against you. Anywhere I go at school, at home, 
in the church, in the district, in the neighborhood, I will hide your word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. If classmates invite me to sin, I will remember your word. If temptations come, telling me to do evil, telling me to commit sin, if temptations come, I will remember the word of God. Thy word, thy word, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. I will not sin. I will not go back to the world. I will not be a friend of the world. The Lord has given me his word, the word of wisdom, and I will follow this word of wisdom. If you have not been born again, surrender your life to the Lord, surrender your heart to the Lord, and be born again. If you have been born again, then begin to walk in newness of life. Hide the word in your heart, so that you will not sin against the Lord. 